Hello there. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to model and plan out a stage production for The Wizard of Oz. You'll learn how to set your model up so you can easily switch between scene to scene to see what it looks like. You'll learn to use scenes to set up a view from any angle in your model. This means you'll be able to see a top-down view along with the actual views that your audience will see so you can make sure that your set looks good and there aren't any obstructions. We'll even learn to use the Move tool to make copies of things like our chair so you can easily array them out and plan how many people are going to sit in your audience. We'll even learn how to make custom set pieces using images found online or taken by a camera. All right, let's get started. Get a fresh SketchUp model open, and on the left side toolbar, find the Rectangle tool. Go ahead and click and release to start your rectangle, and make it about this big, and then type in the dimensions 40 feet by 25 feet. You'll see those pop up in the right-hand corner when you do that. Press Enter, and you'll have a rectangle about 25 feet by 40 feet. Find the push-pull tool on the left side, click and release on the rectangle, move it upwards, type in three feet and press enter. Next, triple click on that stage that we just created and find the paint bucket tool. When the paint menu pops up, find a wood texture or really any other texture that you like and go ahead and paint your stage. Once you do that, right click on the stage and make it a group for neat modeling. This is about the only modeling that we'll be doing in this lesson. Next, we're going to establish a hallway down the center of the area for our chairs. So if you select the tape measure tool on the left side, click somewhere along this long edge of the stage and release. Start moving your mouse pointer right. Keep moving right until the line that you've created snaps to the center of the stage, then click. We can use this newly created center line to click and release again with the tape measure tool. Move a line this far and type in four feet and press enter. Do the same on the other side, type in four feet again, and you've essentially established an eight foot wide hallway down the center of our stage. And you can check that by pulling the tape measure across that newly created space. Now that we have this space, we can start adding our chairs in. On the right side, you'll find the stack of three blocks. This is gonna open up the component browser window. In this window, search for hashtag SU for schools Oz. This will bring up a list of components that we've made for this tutorial, so you don't have to go searching through the 3D warehouse to find them. Find the folding chair and click it, and you'll see that it is brought into your model and kind of attached to your mouse pointer. Put it over here somewhere on the left, doesn't exactly matter where, and click to set it down. When you first bring a component in from the 3D warehouse, SketchUp will be set on the Move tool automatically. If you hover over the red plus marks, you can click and release on them and you can actually spin around an object that you've brought in from the 3D warehouse. As you're rotating an object like this, if you keep the mouse pointer on the protractor or on those little tick marks, you can see that the rotation will snap every 15 degrees. This can be great for placing something like a chair that you'd likely want at a right angle in your model. You can see here how it's changing every 15 degrees. Now, if you move the mouse pointer out of the protractor, you can more freely rotate your model. So here you can see it's not really snapping every 15 degrees. And if you look in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you can see that the angle is much more arbitrary. But go ahead and spin your chair around so it's facing the stage using those tick marks and click once you get it pointing the right way. Now, with the chair selected, click the move tool on the left side toolbar. Click and release somewhere on the ground near the chair and start moving the chair to the right. If you hit Option or Control, you can leave a copy of the chair behind and continue moving another copy as close as you can get it to that hallway that we've established in the middle. When you get the chair far enough, click to set it down. Before you do anything else, look in the bottom right hand corner and type in slash 3 and press Enter. That'll make a couple copies of the chair in between the first and the last chair. You can keep changing that number to four, five, six, or seven until you get as many chairs as you would like. You can do this as many times as you want as long as you haven't moved on to another command in SketchUp. Once you get the amount of chairs that you like, with the Select tool, click and drag to draw a box around the chairs to highlight them all. Then get the Move tool, click somewhere on the floor near the chairs, and start moving them backwards. Tap and release Option or Control to leave a copy of those chairs behind. Click again to set the second row. 
Once you set down that second row, we can make copies of it by typing in star and the amount of copies that you want. You can do as many copies as you'd like. Let's start with three or four and see what that looks like. You can keep retyping this number and pressing enter as many times as you want, as long as you don't go on to another command. Lastly, we're going to select all of those chairs that we just copied by clicking and dragging and selecting the entire group. Then we'll take the move tool on the left side and use the same technique that we've been using. Click somewhere on the floor, tap control or option to leave a copy behind and move this whole bunch of chairs to the other side of the aisle just like this. When you're satisfied that it's in the right place, click again to set them down. Now we're going to start adding some more components to our model. On the right side toolbar, click on the components button and in the search, search for hashtag SU for schools Oz. Go ahead and find the curtain component and click on its icon to bring it into the model. When you bring it in, set it in a corner of the stage like this. Since you already have the move tool selected, you can click on the floor anywhere near the curtain and slide the curtain around to just the right position on the stage. Using the same technique with the move tool that we did for the chair, you can make a copy of the curtain and put it on the other side of the stage. We'll orbit around the back of the model and make a couple more copies of these curtains to make the sideways curtains to conceal the actors and other things that you keep behind the stage. Once we use the move tool, we can hover over those red plus marks to rotate the curtain exactly where we want it. We'll make another copy here to really cover that whole left side of the stage. If we press the space bar and then we click on this back curtain, holding down shift, we can select this other curtain here. Then we can use the move tool using the option or control to leave a copy behind and put a new copy on the other side of the stage, just like you see here. Now, if you're looking at these curtains, you may notice that they're not quite the right sides for the stage. There's some gaps, the curtains in the front aren't wide enough, but that's pretty easy to fix. We can actually select one and take the scale tool and click it and you'll get these green grips. And if you click and drag on these grips, you can actually scale or resize an object like these curtains. So you can fill in any gaps, you can make them wider or narrower, and this will work on any of the curtains or really any component in this model. You can see here, I can use the scale tool to actually close up the curtains on this right side. Now we're going to draw the back mural. Take the rectangle tool and make a small rectangle that spans back across the stage in between the two curtains. Doesn't matter how thick it is, just something like this. Once you set the rectangle down, take the push-pull tool and pull it up to about the height of the curtains. Now we want our back mural to look something like this, and to create this, we actually used an image that we found from Google Image Search. So open up your web browser and do a search for grassy field. You'll find a bunch of images like this. Pick whichever one's your favorite, preferably a straight on one like this, and right click it and say save image as. Save it somewhere in your computer where, where you will remember where it is. Back over in SketchUp, you can click the file icon in the top left hand corner and click insert. That will bring up this dialog box and you can click on your computer and you can select that file that we just downloaded. Once you select the file, it'll be loaded into SketchUp. You've got a couple choices of what you can do with it. You can use it as an image or as material. We're gonna to wanna to do material. When you select material, the paint bucket tool is automatically activated and you can click and release on that background and put the image on the background like this. It doesn't matter that it's not perfect at this point, we're gonna fix that up. Right click directly on the newly placed image and select texture and then position. You're now gonna see some pins that appear around the image. If you click and drag on the pins, you can manipulate the image in different ways. Some of these pins move the image, others scale and rotate it, and the ones on the top actually can skew your image in different ways. What we're going to do though is right click again and uncheck fixed pins. That's gonna turn these four pins into these white and gray pins. If we click and drag on each of these, we can stretch the image like it's a piece of rubber. Click and drag on each pin and stretch it to the corner of this back wall that we've created. You should end up with an image that looks like this. Once you're done manipulating the image, right click and select done. And now you'll see that image is perfectly stretched across that rectangle that we used to create this back wall. 
Now for a little housekeeping, we'll triple click this back wall, right click it, and select Make Group. Now we're going to repeat the same process directly in front of this mural to create a different scene. We'll use the same rectangle tool trick that we did earlier. We'll take the push-pull tool and we'll bring this up to about the level of the mural that we just created. And we're going to go search for stormy sky. So find a nice scary stormy sky like this. Pick the one that's got a nice straight on shot without any obstructions with it and save the image on your computer. Head back over to SketchUp and hit the file folder and select insert. Select the image from your computer. And once you load it into SketchUp, make sure you use it as a material. Paint the material onto this back mural the same way you did before. Again, the initial scale doesn't matter. Just get it close like this. Right click on it, select texture, and then position. Right click again to get rid of these colored pins and get the fixed pins. So again, right click and uncheck fixed pins and then click and drag each pin into the corner, just like you see here. And that will stretch this image to fit perfectly on this mural. Once you get each of the pins placed in the corner, right click again and select done. And there you go, you've got a nice scary background. Triple click on this newly created mural, right click and select make group. Now we're going to finish populating our model with some of the components. Click on the components icon on the right side toolbar. Search for hashtag SU for schools Oz. This will bring up our list of all of the characters and components for this model. Bring in all of the main characters. Make sure you get the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, the Lion, and of course Dorothy. You can do this by clicking and releasing on each of the characters and then moving your mouse pointer over to the model and then clicking again to set them down in place. In addition to the characters, go ahead and get the different set pieces as well, including the Emerald City and Yellow Brick Road and a couple of trees. If you'd like to move anything around, hit the space bar or click on the select tool then select the character or item you'd like to move and then click the move tool and you can move the characters or items around. Repeat this as many times as you like until all of the characters and the set pieces are in places that you're happy with. For this next step, click on the layers button on the right side toolbar. That'll bring up the layers panel and as you can see we only have one layer, layer 0. Click the entity info button on the right side toolbar. Now in your toolbar on the right side, you'll be able to see both the layers and the entity info. Click the plus button on the layers panel. This will create a new layer. Click on the name of the layer and let's change it to Yellow Brick Road. Let's create another layer and we'll call this one Flying Monkey Scene. Now if we select the scarecrow and we look at the entity info window, we'll see that our scarecrow is on layer zero. We want to make the scarecrow part of the yellow brick road scene. So with him selected, we can click on layer zero and change that to the yellow brick road scene. Repeat this process for each of the four main characters. The goal here is to make sure that each of these characters is not set to the yellow brick road layer. Once you have that done, you can go down to layers and you can hit the eyeball next to the yellow brick road scene layer. And you can see that you can switch all of the characters that were placed on that layer on or off. Repeat the same process for the trees in the Emerald City. Again, selecting each of them one at a time, looking in Entity Info, and changing the layer from Layer 0 to the Yellow Brick Road scene. Using the same technique, select the Dark Sky Mural background and change that to the Flying Monkey scene. Now if you toggle the Flying Monkey layer, that Dark Sky scene will turn on and off. Before we move on, practice toggling the Emerald City and the Flying Monkey layers to make sure that the appropriate things are being turned on and off. If everything looks good, switch off the Emerald City scene and switch on the Flying Monkey scene. We're going to start filling out the scene a little more. Go over to the Components browser on the right and do that same search that we've been doing. Hashtag SU for Schools Oz. This will bring up a list of all of those components. Scroll through until you find the Flying Monkeys and the Wicked Witch of the West. Use the Move tool in the same way that we did with the folding chair and make a few copies of the monkeys and place them around. If you want to change the direction that any of the monkeys are facing, right click one of them and select Flip Along Components Red and the monkey will change direction. 
If you want to make any of the monkeys bigger, find the scale tool and use the scale grips to change the size of the monkeys. You can use the move tool to raise and lower the monkeys too to really give them the effect of flying. Now we're going to go back into the components browser and we're going to bring in a new copy of Dorothy and place her in the scene. Don't forget to grab the Wicked Witch of the West as well. Select each component that we just brought in and look in Entity Info and change its layer to the Flying Monkey scene. We want to do this for every character that we've just added to the scene and if you click on the Select tool or hit Spacebar, hold down Shift and click on each of these Flying Monkeys, you can change them all at once. Lastly, let's not forget to do Dorothy, so select her and make sure she's also on the Flying Monkey scene. Now if you've done everything right, you can toggle the layers for Flying Monkey scene and Yellow Brick Road scene on and off. This is great for showing two different scenes on the same stage. Next, we're going to set up some saved views of our stage. Find the Views button on the right side toolbar and click it. Here you can click on the preset views like isometric, top, left, and right to see different angles of your model. Go ahead and find the top view button and leave it there. To save a view, you can click the plus button. You can give that view a name if you want. In this case, we're going to give this one Top View Yellow Brick Road. Now if you were to orbit away from this view and then go click on that preset view again, SketchUp will bring you back to that recorded view. For our next scene, let's actually get the view of what an audience member would see sitting in the front row. On the left side toolbar, find this position camera tool. Zoom in a little bit and click on one of the seats in the front row. This is going to give you a view from that seat. Now if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a number for eye height. Right now the eye height is at almost 7 feet. When you're sitting down, your eye height's at about 4 feet. So if we type in 4 feet and press enter, that's going to give us the view of sitting in the chair in the front row. You'll see that your cursor is turned into an eyeball, and if you click and drag, you can change the position of your head just as if you were looking around from that front row seat. If you're happy with the view, you can hit the plus mark, and let's give this scene a name. We'll call it Yellow Brick Road Front Row. Now we can easily toggle in between these two scenes to get these two different views whenever we want. If you want to do the same thing for the back row, find the same position camera tool, pick a seat in the back row, make sure you change your eye height after to about four feet, click and drag to turn your head to get the view that you want, and then click the plus mark to add another scene. To keep things organized, we'll give this last scene a name and we'll call it Yellow Brick Road Back Row. Now you can easily switch between these scenes whenever you want by clicking their respective icons in the Views toolbar. As you navigate between scenes, you can keep the Layers panel open and you can switch between the Yellow Brick Road scene and the Flying Monkey scene. If you want to save a view that has the Flying Monkey scene, you can navigate to the view that you want, switch the layers, and hit the plus mark at the bottom and you can actually record a view that has the Flying Monkey scene shown as default. This can be great for if you're doing a presentation to show off the different sets or the transitions between uh, the different scenes. Congratulations, you've made an awesome model that you can switch from scene to scene really easily. This is great if you're doing set design, it can be also great if you're doing architectural modeling, or really anything that you want to show the changes between two or more different options. Uh, so great work and keep on modeling.